Good morning. Welcome to St. James Cathedral on this beautiful, summery June morning. My name is Peter Wall. I'm the interim dean of the cathedral, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here, who, those of you who are with us in the nave, and all of those who are joining us online. Uh, glad that you've joined us on this Trinity Sunday. Um, just a couple of announcements before the service begins. Um, this is a busy time in the life of the cathedral. We have lots of activities that have happened and are happening in the days to come. A huge thank you to everyone who contributed so mightily to last, weekend, last weekend's open doors here at the cathedral. We had over 5,000 people through the cathedral on the weekend between Saturday and Sunday. Uh, very large numbers as well at the cemetery. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful time. It was glorious weather. And um, we had all sorts of people in, um, seeing the windows, hearing the organ, looking at the beauty of the building, wandering in the cemetery, finding interesting graves, seeing the beautiful chapel at the cemetery. And that involved the work of a lot of volunteers. So on all of our behalfs, a huge thank you to all those who worked, worked so hard last weekend. Um, today is Refugee Sunday uh, in the diocese, and I'm very happy that uh, uh, members of the Refugee Committee are with us today and are hosting a special coffee hour, so I hope that many of you will be able to join us following the liturgy in Snell Hall for coffee and to greet the members of the Refugee Committee. There's also some really good cookies, I have to say. I didn't eat all of them after the nine o'clock service. Um, this afternoon at 4.30, a very special um, gathering here for Evensong and the celebration of 40 years of priestly ministry of the vicar. Um, it's an opportunity for us to celebrate with him his uh, long career in ordained ministry. Um, Bishop Peter Fenty will be here as our guest preacher, and I hope that um, many of you will be able to come back this afternoon for what promises to be a very, very special afternoon here at the cathedral. Today also at one o'clock is the annual meeting of the York Group, which is taking place in the lecture room on the second floor of the Cathedral Center. Uh, the York Group is the Cathedral Women's Organization. Um, all are welcome to join uh, in the annual meeting, which will begin uh, at one o'clock. You'll have an opportunity to uh, spend some time at the coffee hour and then come upstairs. Um, and if you are looking for the York or for the lecture room, just ask any of us who are there and we'll make sure that you can find it. Um, uh, the 15th of June is another important date, uh, a lecture uh, that afternoon on dementia prevention by an expert in dementia research, uh, a project of the York Group. And um, I hope that many of you will be able to be here. That's Thursday afternoon, the 15th of June at two. Um, there is a special Zoom series beginning on Wednesday evening, the 14th of June, and details of that are in the bulletin as well. Lots and lots of things going on, and lots of things happen because so many people around here contribute so much and work so hard. Now, it's not, uh, it's always a little, one has to be careful, I think is the way to say this, um, in pointing out birthdays, because as soon as you start with birthdays, you'll miss a birthday. And then you start getting cards that tell you how you missed someone's birthday. So I think once you're over 90, I think we can, which is really the new 60, as we all know, I think we can risk making sure that we mark them when we know them. T tomorrow is the 94th birthday of one of the pillars of this cathedral. There are pillars around you um, planted in the floor, holding the ceiling up. But there are also lots of pillars sitting around you as well. People who have worked tirelessly and been present for many, many years and love this place in ways that, that just are astounding and breathtaking for us all. So one of those people is Nancy Mallet, a pillar of the cathedral, who she told me I could divulge this, turns 94 tomorrow. She looks 60 and acts 50. And, and if you've worked with Nancy, you know that there is a special joy in working with her and receiving emails from her. Believe me, she was, she was the person for whom email really was invented. So on behalf of all of us, Nancy, 
uh, a very, very happy 94th, and we're looking forward to the next 7, 8, 10, 15 of these when we'll celebrate with you again. So as you remain seated, be risky, and we'll sing happy birthday to her. It's time to get serious. It's okay. As you, as you are able and as you wish, please stand and join in our opening hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open.
sculpted sun and moon. Holy Spirit, who brooded, brooded over the waters of creation. Holy Word, who lives in us, may we share in your grace, love, and communion, so that we may live in your likeness, for you live in unity and diversity, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome, from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters they were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. 
and there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And so it was. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of Christ. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, amen. Well, welcome to Trinity Sunday, either the most complex and disturbing of Sundays in the church year, or the beginning of the rest of your life. An interesting day, keeping an interesting feast the tradition, long honored in the Anglican Church, 
is that when Trinity Sunday was approaching, the incumbent, or the rector of the parish, who may or may not have had control over the schedule, always decided that the curate would preach on Trinity Sunday and that he or she would be relieved of that significant challenge. Clearly, the tradition has fallen apart, and this irrefutably shows the power of the vicar who controls the schedule. <laughs> we'll get back at you, vicar, one of these days. So Trinity Sunday is a, an odd Sunday in the church year in that it is the only Sunday, the only feast in the church's year. It's one of the big seven, the big seven days that uh, amongst those seven, you know, the others, you've heard of them, Christmas, Easter, things like that, Pentecost. It's the only one that isn't biblical in origin, but wait for it. It's the only one that is a doctrine or a dogma. It's the only Sunday that specifically highlights and underscores a doctrine of the church. And one of the reasons that successive generations of clergy have looked to someone else to preach is because it is confusing, confounding, and difficult to nail down. So listen to this paragraph. It's from a big book. And of course, the bigger the book, the more important the words, right? This is from a big book called the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church describing Trinity. It is the central dogma of Christian theology that one God exists in three persons and one substance. This doctrine is held to be a mystery in the strict sense in that it can neither be known by unaided human reason apart from revelation nor cogently demonstrated by reason after it has been revealed. Of course, simple, really. So the history of all of this is quite interesting. It wasn't until the end of the fourth century that the church actually tried to define what it was talking about. And it only came after many years of fighting, arguing, cajoling, meeting, convincing, bashing each other over the head with sticks, barring entrance from certain councils. It involved all the early Christian heresies, Arianism, Monetism, Pelagianism, all these things in which the early church was trying to figure out who and what it was. Was it simply an advancement of Judaism? Could Gentiles actually belong? Could they be welcomed into this new way? The word church didn't exist, into this new path? Could Greeks, with their love of philosophy and wisdom, could they be included in this new way forward? Was Jesus really divine or simply human with divinity thrust upon him? No, Jesus was fully divine with his humanity being an accident. What did all this mean? How do we make sense of it? How do we talk about it? And so theologians, then and now continue to write and think and pray and learn and teach about this amazing thing we call the doctrine of the Trinity. It is one of the most difficult pieces of Christianity for other monotheistic religions. They don't understand how we can have three in one, one in three, and you know, from hymnody, from prayers, from the way we worship together, that we are constantly expressing this, the inexpressible, 
in many different ways. We talk about the indivisible God. We talk about God in three persons, three persons in one God, as the hymn that began this liturgy states. We will sing another hymn later in this liturgy, a famous hymn in which St. Patrick supposedly tried to make sense of this doctrine in a hymn that we call St. Patrick's Breastplate with a verse that talks about Christ beneath me, Christ within me, Christ above me, Christ around me. So it's a very complex and yet utterly simple thing. It has been the subject of much debate, much consternation, and much fleeing from pulpits. So it is the most unbiblical, is it? Well, not really, if you look at what we've heard today. We heard from the very first words of the Hebrew Bible, that amazing passage, so full of imagery, so full of the wonderful story of creation, so full of all that movement of God, creating, bringing into order, bringing order out of chaos, giving us domes and creatures, green plants yielding food, all those fantastic images that we know so well. Wonderful, wonderful words, the very beginning. And then we heard the very last words from Paul's huge letter that we received in two parts. We call it 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. To a fractious, upset, argumentative, bumptious church in Corinth, where Paul is constantly trying to bring them together to establish a kind of unity. And so we heard the last words from his second and last letter to the church in Corinth. And contained in those words, of course, is the formula, the formula of God in three persons. And then we heard the very last words of Matthew's gospel, the gospel that is the mission-centered gospel of the church that talks about what we are to do and how we are to do it. And those last words from Matthew go into all the world, baptizing all the nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and I will be with you always. So perhaps it really is biblical, and perhaps it really is foundational to who we are. And even though, as the Oxford Dictionary says, it's a mystery that can't really be understood and all those kinds of things, it can be experienced. And that is what we do. Because you and I are given the gift of imagination, and you and I are given the gifts of interpretation. So think of water for a moment. Water can flow. Water can be ice. Water can be steam. In all three forms, it is still water. It does not lose its waterness. Think of an egg. I almost brought an egg, but the last time I tried to prop in this pulpit, it didn't work, so I learned from my mistakes. If you think of an egg, a shell, a yolk, egg white, all held in a dynamic tension, all dependent on each other, the yolk and the egg white are dependent on the shell being whole. The yolk, fragile in the middle, is dependent upon the egg yolk, or the egg white rather protecting it, and the shell protecting the egg white. To change the egg, fry it, boil it, poach it, it's still egg. 
perhaps rather simplistic kinds of illustrations, but the kind of things that our imagination needs to go to when we think about the Trinity. God in three persons, one God in three persons, three persons in one God, unity in diversity, as today's collect prayed. All these various pieces, all coming together. And if nothing, the imagination of the Christian church has always been that we bring diversity into unity, not uniformity, but unity. We bring different colors, classes, races, creeds, feelings, pieties, depth. We bring them all into one family, one community. And we do that in the name of this indivisible, unified, diverse God who comes to us as father, creator, mother, parent, son, redeemer, friend, savior, spirit, enabler, ennobler, fiery one. We come together using our imaginations. We come together using all of the various ways in which we learn and perceive and take in information. And through this, we come up with this amazing tapestry amazing color, amazing gift that we call faith. And the nice thing is, maybe it's the nice thing, is that you and I have the opportunity, opportunity in our lives to deal with our own imagination in different ways. For some of us at times, God the Father, God the Parent, God the Mother is so terribly important. And at other times, God the friend, God who sits beside us, God who holds our hand, God who gives us a shoulder upon which to cry, becomes so vitally necessary to our lives. And at other times, perhaps, God the Spirit, the one who speaks quietly within us, the one who upholds us when being upheld seems so difficult. The one who breathes with us and in us and onto us is such a precious moment in who we are. The incarnation of God in each one of us is in itself a mystery. It is transcendent beyond comprehension. And the presence of God, the Holy Trinity, for each of us is equally mysterious, but deeply wonderful and moving and important. We read in Genesis, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. God finished his work of creation on the seventh day. But God has left to you and to me, empowered by the Spirit, gifted by the Son, and always, always in the presence of the Creator, the inspiring work of continuing creation, of continuing to build the kingdom of God, of continuing to be the people that God wanted us to be there in the world, welcoming the refugee, embracing the one who needs to be held, welcoming the stranger, incorporating them into this wonderful and gifted community. God has given to us the gift of continuing to create along with the Holy Trinity the world that God has given into our care. What a wonderful gift to be given 
on this day of complexity, unity, diversity, and love. May it be so for you and for me, for this place, for all the refugees we welcome, for each other and for all those we love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now standing together, let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of the He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Now let us pray for the church and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Holy, holy, holy God, you call us into the world to make disciples of all nations and to baptize in your name. We give thanks for your church around the world remembering this morning the Anglican province of Alexandria, Linda, our primate, Chris, our national indigenous archbishop, and Susan, national bishop, and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. Here in our diocese, we give thanks for our bishops, Andrew, Priscilla, and Kevin, and for all who serve as teachers and mentors in theological training and discipleship programs. And we pray for our whole cathedral family, for our clergy, and those who serve on the St. James and Community Refugee Committee. Give us grace to serve Christ in one another as we grow together in your love. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. Holy, holy, holy God, you spoke creation into being and called it very good. Give us grateful hearts and steadfast wills to respect, sustain, and renew the face of the earth, the water, the air, the land, and living creatures of every kind. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you promise to be with us always 
to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your protection and healing presence, those who are sick, grieving, or housebound, and those who are asking for our prayers today. Kofi Nyamko, the Reverend Monsell Av, Catherine Seddon, Peter and Ruth, Richard, Hannah, Aleti Hall, John Bowman. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and sustain all the those who remember and care for them. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Holy, holy, holy God, you have given the human family dominion over the world. We pray for the leaders of our country, for King Charles, Justin, our Prime Minister, Doug, our Premier, Jennifer, the Deputy Mayor of Toronto, and all those who serve in offices of public trust and responsibility. For the leaders of all nations, particularly remembering today the troubled places of our world and refugees who have been compelled to flee for their lives. Open our hearts and minds to see what you see, to love as you love, to give as you have given, that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Holy, holy, holy God, you give rest when our lives are done and a peaceful end. We give you thanks for those who have gone before us. Remembering today, Canon Don Bone, Derek Headley, Minerva Gonzalez, Archdeacon Harry Dawson, Carmen Tetha, Albert and Florence Seddon. May they share in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fullness of joy in the fellowship of all the saints in light. Lord, in your love. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of creation, accept the prayers of your people, strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. So let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in every goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As you're able, shall we stand together? Dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
standing together, we pray. O living God, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, all of us may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and for the love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and you have made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, 
he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. Bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. And the bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. I am the vine, you are the branches. The gifts of God for you, the people of God.
Standing together, let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may we who have received this Eucharist worship you in all we do and proclaim the glory of your majesty. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And so glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes every human understanding. May God's peace keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go into the world in peace and loving service. Alleluia.